In case you're just tuning in, today's SpaceX launch scrub delayed until Saturday due to weather. Let's bring in our space panel. Hanukkah Wiedering is Space.com associate editor. Andy Allen is Aerodyne CEO and former NASA astronaut. And Brett Larson is Fox News headlines 24-7 anchor. Hanukkah, let me start with you. What does it mean that it's, that it's scrubbed until Saturday? It just means more time for us to memorize nerdy facts. <laughs> and enjoy ourselves in the run up to the launch. What do you think? Exactly. I think it means that we just get to have the fun all over again. And if it scrubs on Saturday, we'll have the fun a third time on Sunday. But it, it is kind of a bummer though, because there was a whole ordeal today, you know, uh, President Trump, Mike Pence, they came down to watch the launch and Kelly Clarkson sang the national anthem earlier today on NASA TV for this. And I'm wondering how much of that fanfare will continue as the launch date moves down. Yeah. Well, they can always just replay it, just re-rack the tape. Um, Andy, let me ask you, you know, what do you what do you make of the fact that they pulled this? Obviously, this is a pretty common occurrence when it comes to something so precise as trying to launch a rocket to meet up with the International Space Station. Well, it's very true. It's kind of a bummer for the astronauts and the families that come down to visit the astronauts. And there's there's few things an astronaut likes less than to have to unstrap after being strapped in. But we don't have yet the the exact science of figuring out and predicting Mother Nature or acts of God. So it's just one of those things that happens. Yeah, Brett, wasn't that interesting? I don't know if you heard in the last block, but this idea that we can yeah. calculate all of these things but we can't predict with precision the weather. And we heard our theoretical physicists it, blame it on chaos. Yeah, I, which, which I loved, by the way. I, I, I missed that window as well as Connell did at 13 to become a, an astrophysicist, which is a shame because it's always interested me. But it is kind of a fascinating thing to, when you think about it, uh, we could literally put a man on the moon and bring them back, but we can't accurately predict the weather down to the minute. And it, it is it is unfortunate that we missed this opportunity today, but this is not out of the realm for getting people into space. We saw this way back in the 1960s when those poor astronauts that were going to go to the moon had to sit and watch these rockets, some of which never left the launch pad because they blew up or they took mm -hmm. off about three feet and came crashing down. So it's always better to err on the side of caution. It is, mm -hmm. it is a little bit disappointing, but listen, we're going to try again on Saturday. Hopefully, Mother Nature will cooperate with some good weather, and we'll get to see that Falcon 9 rocket uh, carrying passengers for the first time. And if you look back, I mean, Boeing had issues just as soon or as recently as December with their test launch. Their launch vehicle wasn't able to line up properly with the International Space Station because of some calculation errors. Brad, I will say, if Connell? it helps at all, at least you at least you had. Um had satellites in your job, satellite radio anchor. So that was the, that was part of it. <laughs> that's even though you that's true. The, the it's a little bit of rocket science yeah, right. for my job. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, let's talk a little bit, speaking of which, about the, the private company that put all this together and the technology behind it. The first crew to head to space once this happens from U.S. soil in nine years. There's a lot of excitement building up here. And they are doing it with some some new equipment. Um, and, you know, Brett, I'll start with you this time and then we'll work our way through the panel. It, because you cover technology for us. I mean, this isn't uh, this isn't the space shuttle program. Even the space suits you're looking at right there are are new and improved. And, um, you know, it's almost like flying a Tesla around. What do you make of all the touch screens and everything else inside? I, I love it. I was I was watching the feed earlier of the astronauts uh, inside the the Dragon capsule. There, they've got the touch screens above them. You know, within reaching distance. There, they've got their tablets there in their laps. I mean, it's it's so great to see such a huge use of technology and modern technology in our space program. You know, you look at something like the space shuttle that was designed in the late 70s and flew through the 80s, 90s, and then into into 2000. And, and there's some pretty rudimentary technology inside of those vehicles for all of the things they were able to do. You know, they still had monochromatic screens in them. They didn't have all these fancy new glass cockpits that most airliners have now flying around. So I, I love this use of technology so long as they're using it in a way that is appropriate and not just using technology for using technology's right. sake. But, you know, SpaceX has been at this for a long time. They've had a long time to prepare, so they've, they've worked a lot of the kinks out in what they're using. They have tested it a lot. To that point, Andy, um, as someone who's done this, 
it, when you bring in private companies and they do, you know, bring in the latest in, in technology, is that something you would have looked forward to or do you get so comfortable over the years in operating something that you're used to operating that you would have been reluctant to, to make this kind of change? I think that mm. technological advancements are, are really something that we all look forward to. Generally, when you're, when you're dealing with something very complex, it's got to have a lot of testing on the ground. So it may go through 10, 20, 30,000 hours worth of software testing on the ground to make sure that, that you don't have to do any kind of a reboot while you're trying to do something pretty critical. So it's going to be tested pretty well. And by the time it's ready to go fly, you're well trained to go do it. And uh, it's, it's an interesting world now that we have a lot more about push buttons than we do about actually stick and rudder for pilots and, and the kinds of things that we were used to, the steam gauges as we used to call them in the old airplanes that I used to fly before the, the new generation of airplanes came about. Yeah, so everything's touchscreen now and autonomous, by the way. So, you know, you're yeah. almost the backup as a pilot, but they had to make the gloves yeah. such, you know, and people will think uh, now that you have a, a touchscreen phone at home, you buy, you get cold in the winter, you buy those gloves that allow you to touch your phone and still operate it. Those are the types <laughs> of gloves with that type of technology that these astronauts have to use. Um, Hanukkah, a final word here on coming together and the use of private enterprise and the ingenuity that goes along with a company run by Elon Musk in, in, in making this all happen from the perspective of technology? What do you think? So I think that, you know, even though everything that SpaceX is making looks like really fancy and flashy and futuristic, it's also important to remember that they're developing new technologies that are very innovative and kind of like futuristic in terms of how space exploration works. So they were the first to reuse a rocket. They launched the Falcon 9 rocket and they landed it back on Earth, which is still amazing to watch, even though they've done it dozens of times and dozens of times and they're making the spacecraft reusable as well the you know the dragon the cargo dragon as well as the crew dragon both reusable so they're kind of pushing towards the future of space exploration and i think that's that's even more exciting than the fancy touch screens and spacesuits and all that mm -hmm. good points all around terrific panel we'll start the clock here t minus until 3:22 p.m on saturday afternoon and hope for the best then thanks to all three of you we appreciate it melissa